time of the week to talk about the ratings again. They've read about the ratings, they've heard about them. Knocked half of that back already. So this is a more of a sober saloon, actually, if you think about what's been going on. So knowing that we, like many streams, dissect the ratings to see what it says about the health of our show, Doctor Who, let's get right into the weeds of it. And I've got a lot of points to make today, uh, and I'll do them quite quickly, I hope. So um, if you take a look here, the overnight ratings for Empire of Death, as you know, 2.25, up almost a quarter of a million on previous episodes. Thank you to Gary Lee for that uh, nice, attractive slide. Now, um, every week it is millions down, a light rise, a drop again, that sort of thing. But what does the fall in ratings, whether it indicates the decline of the show or not, <clears throat> what do... Sorry, my little things. That what does it mean for BBC's power play and relationship with Disney? I think that it's fascinating and possibly very worrying and alarming. First, let's truly look at the bold facts of what we're talking about here. Okay, so let's start here, <clears throat> and then we've got the full picture. Between Star Beast and the Giggle, the audience went down by four hundred and sixty thousand on overnights. Now, we know they don't like them, so on Consolidated, the one they all loved to a day or two now, it fell by, as you can see there, 760,000. You can't blame the weather. This was November, December. You can't blame football or anything else, and those are the measures they like to use. So let's be honest, the momentum was lost, interest was lost, and um, it's the popularity of Doctor Who was down yeah okay chibnall period i think we realize hemorrhaged doctor who fatally or more severely than we ever really anticipated and we were getting alarmed the specials clearly did not impress i mean to lose seven hundred sixty thousand on their prized uh measure and the content and messaging sent people away when they expected escapism so mix that horrible toxic con you know, concoction there. Chibnall's era was hemorrhaging Doctor Who's popularity. The specials did not impress, and the content and messaging sent people away. Great start, eh? And then when we come to this season, Space Babies to Empire of Death, on the overnights over the season, have dropped by 350,000. On Consolidated Up to Rogue, because remember, they like to delay their figures nowadays, it's dropped by 490,000. Now, when you're dealing with only 2 and 3 million in the first place, as I've said in the recent saloon, that's 60-odd percent of your audience share is gone. So we've got similar falls in the specials, if you think of the figures I've just said. There's a consistency, which is reduction in viewers. From Star Beast to Empire of Death, the overnights was down by 2.83 million. From Star Beast to Rogue, the consolidated was 4.09 million lost. So let's talk some more bold facts. That is not clearly what the BBC wanted. It's not what the Disney wanted. All the fans wanted and Bad Wolf and RTD expected, is it? Let's be honest. They hide the audience appreciation figures. Why would you do that? RTD says he had a massive success with the under 30s. No figures are released and that market is so small, I cannot imagine it will impact on actual ratings much anyway. The great streaming future has been a damp squib with a bit of a rise for the last few episodes because most of us did not want to be isolated from online social messaging for a day because they so inconveniently put the Doctor episode on at midnight. Certainly a great reward for the British license player that. <clears throat> now, take a look at this. Streaming rise for Empire of Death. It was another little uh, dip upwards, uh, 283,000. We know why we all wanted to avoid spoilers. It wasn't excitement. It's just he didn't want any spoilers at the last minute. So, okay, I'm granting that tiny figure difference can't really see this so i'll make it a lot bigger these are obviously the disney figures and i've highlighted only three because the rest of the countries there's no consistency top 10 figuring out of doctor who we've got haiti brazil and jamaica 
a lot of the countries in Eastern Europe and a lot of countries with a more conservative audience are really not taken to this doctor or taken to the messaging or taken to the whole package. But, you know, when you, you've got to think about who your audience is and the heavy DEI, um, the messaging, something about this Doctor Who does not work. And so basically it works for Haiti, Jamaica and Brazil. New Zealand like to try and be trendy. They're up and down a little bit, but it's not much. It's not much at all. Um, so here's the rub of it all. What will Disney make of this? What will Disney make of this? I know there are reports that the season three has been commissioned. Again, why not shout it from the rooftops? Because that would placate some critics. They haven't. And my reports from media sources were that Disney will wait and consider. Some reports say in a few months' time, and some say they'll make the decision in early 2025. Now, come on, let's think about this. You're Disney. You have had interest in Doctor Who since the 1990s. You now have a deal with the BBC for those two seasons. The BBC are under pressure for more cuts to their budgets, under pressure because of their content, and under pressure politically. The BBC have never known what to do with Doctor Who, let's be honest, nor understood what it was and why it was liked. Lorraine Hegarty aside in 2004. So, let's get this right. You have a beleaguered BBC, financially pressed, so embarrassed by the figures that they avoid overnight, they hide behind the consolidated figures. They say ratings don't count really, unless you are the target under 30 market. Hide in appreciation figures, which are tanked in Geordie's last seasons to mid to low 70s. So if that's the position you're in as Disney, okay, and knowing this, that the eight episodes of this season of Doctor Who were in the worst nine. I've done like a five-year-old. I've drawn in where Empire of Death would go, and you could see it would be in sixth place at 2.25. So basically, a whole season has consistent, consistently been the worst in Doctor Who's history. Now, Disney knows that, and the BBC knows that, and they can say what they want publicly. Good for them. But in private, they know that this puts the BBC in a very, very weak position. All right. So you've got that. That's your product that you're trying to sell to Disney. Take a look at this then. And Disney knows this, this, this too. Right. Now, whether I make it bigger or smaller, I don't think it really matters. <laughs> Go from 2005 to the end of Jodie Whittaker. You can see in those line graphs where the popularity of the program was, where it starts to decline. And yes, with most doctors, it starts well and then tends to decline a little bit. Matt Smith excluding that and David Tennant excluding that. But look at the end of the Jodie Whittaker era, which was below 5 million. And then you've seen I've drawn a red line downwards and a green line downwards in my usual kind of primary school colours. The red one is their lovely consolidated and the green is their overnights. That's where this series stands compared to everything from 2005 onwards. Now, so there's your fragile position as the BBC in negotiations with Disney. If you were Disney, would you rush, honestly, to make another expensive deal? Uh, no, I would wait. I would get the BBC sweating. Disney knows the BBC needs it. The BBC, and I've said this many times, is addicted to the money supply and the streaming and the marketing clout Disney can supply. So it's in Disney's interest to squeeze the pips, to get more out of the next deal, get more control of content, pay less for it, get a deal. And the BBC is in no position to walk away and play hardball. This is a buyer's market. Doctor Who is a great brand. We know that. But it's weak currently. If that was a house on the market, you would bargain the price down. So I'm dubious about the rumoured commissioning of season three, unless the, a, a bargain deal has been done. I would expect Disney to wait to drive a hard bargain. I do not expect Disney to walk away. I'm not being alarmist in that way. No, no, no. Why would you do that? 
despite the figures, when the commodity is damaged, let's be honest, it's a good time to see its potential and buy and invest and reap the rewards. If you see a dilapidated house in a good area and it has potential, you get the buying price down, do it up and reap the rewards. You don't walk away. Disney are now in that position. The BBC have done this to themselves, let's be honest. With their policies and staff recruitment from Chibnall to Geordie to RTD. They have weakened their position when, ironically, I think they thought if they got RTD back, he would strengthen their position. By changing Doctor Who so much, he has just delivered a prize asset to Disney on the cheap, like John the Baptist's head on a place on a plate to Salome. Appalling management, appalling strategy. This is not the story of the cat that got the cream, but more the house, the mouse that got the cheese. The house of the mouse has got its teeth into Doctor Who, and the BBC cannot pretend it does not need it. This messing with the brand, messing with DEI quarters, messing with the main character so much has damaged their own product in the world market. As usual, it proves that the executives at the top of the BBC organisation are not streetwise or street savvy and do not understand TV, nor do they understand the market price and how Doctor Who could have thrived in that marketplace. They control TV, but they do not understand it. But when was it ever different with the BBC? That's the position we're in. That's the position Doctor Who's in. I'm not just waffling on about the ratings. The ratings create a weak position for Doctor Who. A weak position for the BBC. And if you were Disney, would you walk away now? Oh, no, no, no. This is your moment to change everything. This is your moment to get your hands on the prize. This is your moment. You've waited for it for 30 years. And the BBC, through calamities, chaos, stupidity, naivety, and not understanding what you've got. It's almost like being in a car boot sale and you give something away for, you know, 20p or something. And then you realize it was worth an awful lot more. They don't know what the Doctor Who brand is. So they've allowed people to wreck it. But I do think they thought bringing RTD back would drive the price up. And unfortunately, he has had other agendas and nobody's checked him. And now we're in this dicey position. So that's why you can see that Mina Stroker over there has got, <laughs> she's on the elk. And uh, I, well, she, she, I don't think she can stand up. So it is a bit of a sober saloon today. Um, I'll keep reporting. See you soon.